Okay, let's talk about light in relation to photography. Photography actually means painting with light, and really that's all you're doing. Um, without light, you can't take photos. It's as simple as that. And with any DSLR, there basically are three fundamental ways that you can actually attract light to the sensor. Um, and you have to understand these because each one will have a different effect on the final image, on the output. So we're going to talk about them. The first one is shutter speed, the, the shutter inside the camera. Second is the aperture. And the last one is the ISO. Now, I'm going to talk about the aperture first because I want to talk about the lens. Now, the aperture is on a camera and I'm going to show you quickly how to look at the aperture and look at the leaves and see the effect very quickly. Um, it's using a button here called the depth of field preview button. Now we're going to talk about that a bit later on in another video but for now if you set your camera to aperture priority or AV um, and set it to around f10 or even the smallest it will go, in fact set it to the smallest it will go, I'm going to f22 and then turn the camera around, look in it and push that button in and out and you can see the leaves of the aperture opening and closing as you push and release the button. And that really is all that happens. When you take a photo with a very small aperture, it's shutting down and closing out the light and, and allowing less light to come in through the, the lens. And the effect of that is depth of field. The smaller the hole, the greater the depth of field or the more of an image you have in focus. Now, the opposite of that, the wider the aperture, so the more light coming in, the, the, the less depth of field you have, so not so much of the photo will be in focus. And it's a great effect for things like portraits where you just want the eyes in focus and everything else blurred. Um, you can use a wide aperture, focus on the eyes and everything else will be blurred. So that's how the aperture works and it just opens and closes and lets more or less light in through that way. Now let's talk about the shutter. We're gonna take the lens off completely. And while I do that, I'm actually going to point out, you can see on the lens here that we have all of these contact points which actually match the contact points on the camera itself and these are what control the autofocus and the iris or the aperture um, so obviously they need to be aligned when you're attaching the, the, cam uh, the lens to the camera and if you don't do it all the way if you forget to do it all the way for one the lens might fall off secondly the contact lens uh, the contacts won't be fully aligned so certain things on the lens won't work so you just need to make sure it clicks into place and it's solidly attached so let's talk about the shutter. The shutter speed is, is probably the one you'll think about most when taking photos because obviously if you're photographing moving subjects, you need to freeze them and stop them dead in their tracks. Now, a faster shutter speed of say 250th, 500th, or 1,000th, or even 8,000th of a second is super quick and that will freeze most action. And obviously the faster the subject, the faster the shutter speed you need to open and close to actually freeze that subject in motion. Now, if you look inside the camera, I'm going to set this now to manual and I'm going to set a shutter speed of, in fact, I'm going to go to B, to bulb, um, because bulb is, will keep the shutter open for as long as I press the shutter down for. So let's look inside the camera. Always be careful when you're doing this. Don't make sure you're in a dust-free environment. There's no wind and, and just make sure that you look after your lens and the, and the, um, the mirror and the... Um, and the sensor. So let's open this up now and you can see inside there we've got the, the mirror which is reflecting anything that goes through the lens up into the prism and out through the back. So you're, you're basically seeing what you're going to shoot. If we now press the shutter, you'll see that the shutter opens and at the back there the mirror's flipped up, the shutter's opened and you're now seeing the actual sensor of the camera which is recording all of the, the data. Now obviously because I've got no lens on and that it's a bright environment that's going to produce a completely white photo. But you can see in there that that's what happens as you take a photo. And when you release the shutter, the mirror flips down, the shutter closes, and the sensor stops recording any data. And let's now do that with a fast shutter speed. I'm going to go to manual, and let's set a thousandth of a second. Let's do that now. You can see that the shutter actually opens quicker and closes quicker than the mirror can flip up and down. So it's a very, very fast shutter speed. So, and again, that's for capturing um, moving objects. If we slow that down now to say a, an eighth of a second, you see the difference now. You saw the sensor for a lot longer there. So obviously with that kind of shutter speed, you can have camera shake or you can have things blurred on the image because it's such a slow shutter speed. So it's good to learn all the shutter speeds and what they're good for. And a general guide for shutters is for everyday kind of shooting, you, you should be okay with 
around a 60th or 125th of a second, as long as there's nothing fast moving in the, in the, um, in the frame. Now, another rule to follow, if you can, to be able to hand hold a shot, and we talk about this later on as well, try and match the shutter speed with the focal length of the lens. So I'll give you an example. If we're using a 70 millimeter lens, this is the 24 to 70. If I'm using it at 70 millimeters, I really need a shutter speed of around a 70th to ensure that I don't get a camera shake. So for this, I'd use 80th of a second. If I zoom right out to a 24 millimeter lens, then I can go as low as a 25th um, or around there as a, as a shutter speed that's hand holdable because, because it's a wide angle lens, it's not gonna create so much movement so I can hand hold at slightly shorter, slower shutter speed. If I was using a thousand millimeter lens, which is really zoomed in on the subject, obviously the slightest movement in the camera will allow that to move all over the place. So I'd need at least a thousandth of a second to, to freeze the action while hand holding, if you're able to hand hold that kind of size lens. Um, so really the shutter speed determines how long the light hits the sensor for. The aperture, how much light, it allows how much light you, you can control to hit the sensor, the shutter speed, determines how long that hits the shutter for. Um, so a longer shutter speed will allow more light to burn onto the sensor. The last one you have is the ISO, um, or ASA it used to be called in film days, and that controls the sensitivity of the, uh, sorry, the sensitivity of the sensor. Um, a low ISO of 50 or 100 is about standard or about average. 100 is average, and it used to be in the film days, you used to get 100 ASA film. And that's normal for normal out day, outdoor daylight photography and normal sunshine. If you go lower, 50 ISO, it's less sensitive. So you would need a slightly faster shutter speed or a wider aperture to compensate. On the other end of the spectrum, if you were shooting natural light inside a church, which is fairly dark, you can raise the ISO sensor, the, the sensitivity, right up to maybe 3200 or 6400 to make it super, super sensitive. And because of that, you're able to hand hold a lot more shots in darker environment. If you were to use that kind of um, ISO of say 3,200 outdoors, you've got a highly sensitive shutter. So your camera is going to be going, you know, just calm this down a bit. I, I need less light. So you would have a super fast shutter speed and a small aperture. So if you were shooting really fast sports or action outside, you could up the ISO to maybe 2,500 or 3,200 and then get really fast shutter speed. Most cameras go to about an eight thousandth of a second. So you can have that with a, a low aperture to give you good depth of field and create some really stunning, very fast action shots like the couple you're seeing on the screen now. Um, but the, with high ISO comes a bit of a pitfall, a bit of a downfall. You will get what's called grain or noise on your images. So bear that in mind, when you're increasing the ISO on your camera, on your sensor, just bear in mind that you may get some grain or noise, but there's ways to deal with that, which we'll discuss later on. But really, those are the three ways of determining how much light hits your film or sensor. So learn them, learn the effects of each. Um, we'll talk about them more in more detail later on in these series of videos. But for now, just remember that there's only three ways of controlling light on the camera. The lens and the iris or the aperture, the shutter speed, and the ISO. So think about those three, play with them and see the effects of each as you progress with the course.